guys. So every now and then I wear these little embroidered earrings that I make and I always get some questions about how they were made. So I thought I'd slip together a little tutorial for you. What's awesome about this is you're only going to need a couple of supplies to make your amazing earrings. You'll need some craft felt, some scissors, some embroidery floss, and my favorite kind of needle, which is a big eyed, sharp and pointy chenille needle. Chalk always helps because I love drawing on craft felt with it. You can erase it quite easily. Go ahead, draw your rainbow shape with chalk, fold your fabric in half for what I call a BOGO. When you cut it out, you got two for the price of one. And then, like I said, if you just mess it up, just rub off that chalk and give it another go. When you're going to be making these earrings today with meh, you're gonna be learning a ton of different kind of embroidery stitches. So think of these little earrings of yours as a wee bit of a sampler. When you're done with the outside of the rainbow, go ahead and cut one smaller arch and then one even tinier. Now, I know you rainbow fanatics out there are gonna get all up in my business about the fact that I started with purple as the biggest rainbow first and then work smaller down to green as opposed to vice versa. Let me just tell you, I tried it. I didn't like it. I took my artistic license and I used it. Thank y'all. When you're cutting these out, um, I have nothing else to say. I started that sentence and I don't know where I'm going with it. So just continue cutting. And what I was doing was making sure they're kind of like, you know, even. All right, let's talk embroidery floss. Ugh. Oh, embroidery floss. Let me just tell you, it comes in a bunch of beautiful colors. It's so super cheap, but it comes in six separate strands, which you might want to separate. And you can see I am doing a really bang up job doing it here. It does help to pull the bottom of the floss as you separate, and that will keep it from tangling into a bigger mess than it probably already will be. If you happen to have a little bit of wax or even chapstick on hand, rub the floss over that to help straighten it out. Thread your needle and let's tie a double knot at the end. I make a letter O, Take the tail, put it in the hole, and pull. Pull slowly so you can hopefully get your two knots to land one on top of another, making for a bigger knot. Let's do the running stitch. This is probably the stitch you're most familiar with if you've not done a lot of stitching, but it's the one that kind of looks like a dotted or a dashed line. We're gonna be learning lots today. This is the one that you'll wanna start with cause it's the easiest. You simply take your needle up, pull it until the knot stops you, then bring your needle back down. I liken it to a little guy going swimming in a pool. He dives up out of the water, then he dives back down. You'll want to make sure that he dives up out of the water and doesn't go around what you're stitching. That would be a whip stitch, and while that's a really cool stitch, it's not what we're going for right here. We're going for the dotted line look, which means you're going up, pulling it all the way until the knot stops you, then diving back down. When you're finished, you're going to need to tie a knot to anchor all those stitches in place. Slide your needle under the last stitch. I'll try it again. Slide your needle under the last stitch and then swoop back and pick up that loop. In my room, we call that the airplane trick. Let's go over it one more time. Go underneath your last stitch, doing this on the back so all of the knots end up on the back. Then you're going to pull your needle, we're calling it the airplane. It's taking off from the airport when suddenly it remembers it forgot a passenger, the loop. Swoop back, pick up the loop, and pull. It's important that you do this not, not just once, but twice to really anchor in place. So one more time, underneath, and then your airplane takes off. Oh snap, we forgot somebody. Turn around and pick up that loop. How do you know when to tie a knot? Well, either when you're finished with your stitches or your needle and thread are as long as your hand. Let's try a new stitch. This one's called the satin stitch. Whenever you're starting again, you need to re-thread your needle and re-tie a knot at the end. To do a satin stitch, it's kind of like a decorative stitch. You're going to be doing the same kind of motion that you did with the running stitch and that you're going up and pulling it back down. You still have your same diver coming up and then going down, not around, because remember, that's the whip stitch. So here I go, and for this one, I'm kind of going for a radiating line effect. So you'll notice that I'm always either coming up from that center point or diving back down there. Now, when you're stitching, your needle can never come up through the same spot where it just went down. I know that doesn't make any sense, but trust me when I say, because if you do this, you'll be essentially taking your stitches out which is great if you make a mistake, but not if you're trying to sew. 
All right, so now that I've got my kind of radiating line effect going, I'm now going to use some other stitches. The cool thing about embroidery is that you are drawing with thread. Once you learn just a couple of basic stitches like the satin stitch, the running stitch, and the others that I'm going to be sharing with you today, the possibilities are endless. So just think of yourself as exploring all of those different kind of stitches when you're working on your thin, tiny, cute little earrings. Let's learn something called a back stitch. Okay, so with a running stitch, you have a stitch that looks like a dashed line, right? Well, what if you want a continuous line? To get that, you'll have to stitch forward and then jump back to your previous stitch. Why? Well, because of the reason I told you earlier, y'all. If your needle comes up through a place where it just went down, it will take the stitch out. However, if your needle hops forward and then goes back like I did just there, you'll have a continuous stitch and your stitches will not be removed. I know I'm going super fast, so just hit the pause button, check it out, and you can see how I'm going forward and then going right back. Whenever I'm sewing, I always make sure that all of my knots, meaning wherever I start or tie off the knot with the airplane trick, end up in the back. You want to be sure of this so that all of the not as attractive stitches end up in the same place and all the beautiful stitches are on the front. Think about when you take off a pair of socks. All of the stitches and the not really beautiful parts are always on the inside so nobody can see them. And on the outside, you have the lovely design of your stinky, smelly sock. Okay, now let's finish this off with the blanket stitch. Okay, I better slow down a little bit so you guys can check this one out. Because every time I do the blanket stitch, I mess this up and I have to redo it again. So for the blanket stitch, you're going to jump forward a little bit, pull your needle up. <laughs> I'm going in slow motion here, which appears to be very slow. Pull your needle up. And kind of like the airplane trick, swing your needle back and pick up the loop like a so, and then go ahead and pull it until the knot stops. Jump forward again. Okay, finish up pulling here. Jump forward again and then go back and pick up the loop. The reason I like using the blanket stitch is because it's a really good finished edge to whatever you're working on, like the earrings or like a blanket if that's what you happen to be working on. If you hit a corner when you're doing the blanket stitch, simply go to the corner, rotate, and just keep going. With embroidery, nobody's going to be getting all that close anyway. So if you make a couple of stitches that aren't pretty, aren't perfect, don't get let yourself get hung up on that stuff. If people are that close to you, you need to tell them to back off if they're up and close and pointing out your boo-boos. Have they made embroidery earrings that look as amazing as you? I think so. Okay, finished up. You're going to need some things I forgot to tell you. You're going to need a jump ring, which is that guy, and then a French hook. So now I'm just making a couple of stitches going around the whole thing, probably about three to really anchor that jump ring in place. And once you've got that stitched into place, then you're going to flip it over and do the airplane trick. Remember, not just once, but twice. Sometimes when my students are sewing, they like to bypass the airplane trick. Y'all, if you do, that means all your stitches are going to come out. So now that I've got that finished, I'm going to open up this jump ring like this, and then slide the hook in like that, and then close it up, and bam, I got my some earrings. Check it out. I cannot wait to see the earrings that you make, too. Have fun, guys.